Hello, welcome to E Teachers 365, where education and culture meet. My name is Elaine Johnson, wife, mother, educator, master storyteller. Today I'm going to read a story for you called Preaching to the Chickens, the story of young John Lewis. It was written by Jabari Asim and illustrated by E.B. Lewis. Little John Lewis loved the spring. He loved it, not only because it was time, it was the time when the whole planet came alive, but also because it was the season of the chicks. Winter was too cold to bring them safely into the world, and summer was too hot. Spring was just right. Everyone on the farm had work to do. Work and put your trust in God, John's mama liked to say. And God's going to take care of his children. Trusting in God was easy. Work was a harder bargain. There was just so much to do on a huge farm in southern Alabama. Have you ever been to a farm before? What kind of animals do you think you're going to see there? Every March, John's father hitched the plow to a stubborn old mule. Giddy up, he'd shout. And together they'd break new ground, carving lines in the earth. In the fall, after months of planting, weeding, and tending, the cotton would be ready for picking. John's mother cooked family meals from vegetables she grew. Collards, tomatoes, sweet potatoes, and other goodies. She cleaned the family's clothes in a big iron pot, stirring them in the boiling water and washing them with homemade soap before hanging them on the line to dry. Yes, Lord, plenty of work on a farm. John was excited to be put in charge of the chickens. There were about 60 of them, Rhode Island Reds, strong winged Bantams, Dominiques with gray stripes as dull as dishwater and legs as yellow as daisies. John loved to see them flutter and strut and flap their wings. Did you know there were this many types of chicks? Every day, John got up early and fed them dried corn, just shelled from the cob, then lined their nest with fresh straw. Cluck, 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 the chicken said. John knew they meant thank you. In a soft voice, John would say to them, enjoy this day that God has given us. The chickens looked straight at him, seemed to understand. As much as John loved spring, he loved church even more. On Sundays, the whole family headed to services. John and his brothers were dressed in slacks and crisp white shirts, his sisters in neat dresses. Outside the church, friends and relatives greeted each other with big smiles. Inside, voices joined in song. John often listened to gospel and country music on the radio. He enjoyed it, but he found his favorite music of all in church, plain voices, praising God without any instruments at all. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. As the worshipers clapped and sang, John felt the Holy Spirit rocking the room. It reminded him of the peace he felt when he roused the chickens from slumber and led them into the light of a brand new day. Like the ministers he heard in church, John wanted to preach. So he gathered his chickens in the yard. John stretched his, bar his arms above his flock and let the words pour forth. The chickens nodded and dipped their heads as if they agreed. They swayed to the rhythm of his voice. John's brothers and sisters couldn't tell one bird from another. John knew every one, and he had a line of verse for each of them. Blessed are the peacemakers, he'd say, 
when they fought over their morning meal. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, he would tell a hen who didn't want to share, but they shall be satisfied. One day, the rolling store man stopped by to make a trade. His truck was packed with flour, sugar, cooking oil, and bolts of cloth in bright colors. I've got plenty of good things, he said to John's mom and dad. I'll give them to you for a healthy hen. How do you think John might be feeling about giving up his healthy hen? But John did not want to part with any of his chickens, and he knew they wanted to stay with him. He convinced his parents there were other things to trade, like eggs and seeds. The chickens stayed on the farm, and John learned to speak up for those who can't speak for themselves. When the ken called Big Bell fell into the well and got stuck, John was determined to save her. He filled a basket with breadcrumbs, and when he lowered it down, she climbed in and was pulled to safety. God makes miracles every day, John preached. When you're down, he lifts you up. Sister Big Bell, I believe you know what I mean. Cluck, 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 Big Bell replied. John knew she meant amen. John even baptized the chicks, bathing them in water from an old syrup can. But little Pullet had stayed under too long and appeared to have drowned. John prayed over her and laid her in the sun. After a while, she began to breathe again and soon was up on her feet. He can heal the sick, John declared, and raise the dead. Little Pullet, can I get a witness? Peep, 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 said little Pullet. John knew she meant Amen. John loved to tell the hens and chicks the good news. While he fed and watered them, he spoke about the value of hard work and patience. With faith and hope, he said, a bountiful harvest was sure to come. John's hen house sermons became so regular that his brothers and sisters took to calling him preacher. He didn't mind. He knew that someday he'd speak before thousands. He hoped that his words would stir people's souls and move them to action. For now, though, he had his own church right here among the pine trees and rolling hills of southern Alabama. Morning would find him in his usual place, preaching to the chickens. The end. So, why did I choose this story? Preaching to the Chickens, the story of a young John Lewis. Well, he recently passed July 17, 2020, and I thought it was an amazing story to talk about how he grew up in Alabama and how he shared, he used to preach to the chickens that he took care of. I think that I would share this with kindergarten to fifth grade. I think in kindergarten, you could talk about the animals you see on the farm, how maybe you have chores to do, Talks, it talks about looking forward to activities with his family, like going to church. You can always, within a classroom, the stories you decide to read, the children can, as always, it can be a mirror or it can be a window. And so in this particular story, for some students who go to church, who get dressed on Sundays and have to do activities with their family, are making a connection. And for those children who have never experienced this, that go to other places to worship, they can look in to see what other people's experiences are. This is how we build empathy, and this is how we build communities within our classrooms, but also we need community building within our country and our world. As a third grade teacher, I would talk to my students about civil disobedience. I would teach them about the Freedom Riders. I would teach them about the civil rights movement. They are old enough to know the truth of American history, and I think that this is a great way uh, a soft way to bring them into the story of John Lewis. Many students know the story of Martin Luther King and they know about Rosa Parks, but I think it's important that we try to teach children that there were more than just one leader. There was more than just one person. It was a movement 
and a movement is what made the laws change. There were more people in the room. There were more people willing to fight. There were more, more people willing to protest. And um, John Lewis is an instrumental person in the civil rights movement and went on to be a leader in politics as well. So this is a perfect story to just kind of go through the timeline of um, John Lewis and to talk about the great things that he accomplished in his life. It doesn't talk about all of those things in its story, but this is how you can bring in a map. Where are you located? And then talk about what happened in Selma, Alabama. Okay. Um, you can talk about your location and what's going on now in the country. I think it's important that we tell our children and tell our students the truth.